listening to Creeping Wave Radio, a documentation of our decidedly creepy escapades here on Mind. once the mics go off. Well, this is it. This is it? It doesn't look very villainous. Yeah, that's usually something you don't want to advertise. It looks like a distillery. Because it is. They distill spirits in both the literal and metaphysical sense. Okay. So, uh, how do we get in? Through the cellar. Right. Yeah, of course. The cellar. Come on. I'll give you the full tour. And don't forget your phone. Have it ready. Right. My phone. Yeah. Okay. We're ready. We can do this. One... Two, three. So, I'm guessing you've been here before. Smart boy. (laughs) Yeah, thanks. So, if you know the layout so well and you have demon magic and all, I don't know, I I guess I just feel like a third wheel. There's only two of us here, Nap. You know what I mean. Maybe I know the layout so well, Nap, because I've done this all before. Okay, great. So, this will be a walk in the park for you. Phew. (laughs) I came here leading an army of demons, and I failed them all. Please tell me that's not what happened. I wish I could. Wait, wait, wait. If they killed off your army... (sighs) What chance do I stand against them? We're going to find out in a minute. That's not exactly comforting. Shh. The entrance is just over there. I'd expect to have seen someone standing guard by now. Seems a little suspicious. I had a feeling this was going a little too well. Come on, let's move. Right. It's chained shut. Ugh. Ah, they're iron. It'll burn me if I touch it. Jeez, oh, that looks bad. Do you have an allergy to it or something? It's kind of a demon thing. Oh, right. Nap, did you bring your gun? Yeah, what? You want me to shoot it open? No, no. Look over there. Do you see that? Aw, it's a little bunny. Shoot it. What? No! You have to, Nap. I can't. Look how cute he is. Oh, I can't shoot something that cute. What about Steve? You people are never going to let that go, are you? Use your enchanted bullets, Nap. Shoot the rabbit and wish for something to break through those chains. Oh, I'm so sorry, little guy. I... Wish for something to break through these chains. Well, go get it. Oh. I only have 56 rounds left now, thank you very much. Or is it 55? Oh, jeez. Oh my god! Isn't this the most adorable pair of bolt cutters you've ever seen? Just look at his little ears or the handles and oh, look at his cute chompy little teeth. It's darling nap now, if you don't mind. Oh, the chains. (laughs) Right, of course. Well, on we go. There should be an old hydraulic lift over there that will take us up to the ground floor. I'm betting they have Cyrus chained up somewhere around there. Really? We're 
just gonna take the elevator? I just hope it still works. Ah, here it is. That's the elevator? It's not a lift for people. It's for barrels. Get on. I don't think I'll fit. Just huddle together, see? Put your hand around my waist. <sighs> like this? Mm-hmm. Nap? Uh, yeah? Do you always bring your Legos with you? Oh, <laughs> Well, I, uh... Hold on tight. Up we go. Ground floor. What is all this? Those used to be stills. Now they're mostly used to store ether. In these copper vats is the stolen essence from billions of unwitting human beings. Why are they clanging like that? Story! A story! Looks like we've been spotted. Use your phone now. Uh, but I don't really know how I did it before. Do you have to whine about everything? Shut up and shoot. Oh my god. Oh my god. Uh, how do I shoot this phone thingy? Help! <laughs> What did you do? That wasn't me. Good reflexes, Nap. Thanks, I guess. Why is he all shriveled up like... Ew. That didn't happen with Anatole. That's because you didn't perceive Anatole as an actual threat. There don't seem to be any more coming. Must have been a lone guardsman on patrol. He's all crispy and crunchy. Don't touch the corpse, Nap. Sorry. Why would they just have one lone guard designated for this area? Jeez, look at all the keys he had on his belt. Oh no, you think I killed the janitor? Wait a minute, let me see those. Nap, that wasn't the janitor. No? And he wasn't a guard either. That was the dungeoneer. Is that an actual title you can have? It sounds so badass. I have a hunch we'll find Cyrus somewhere close. But where could they be keeping him? That almost sounds like... Morse code. How would you know? I... I don't remember, actually. I watch a lot of war documentaries online, I guess. Listen. S... O. S. It's coming from inside this still. And look up there. That hatch. It has a lock on it. One of those dungeon guys' keys must unlock it. Here, give me a boost. Ugh. Ugh. Oh. Uh, no. Not this one. No again. Uh, wait, H hold on. Hello, Hello in, there? in there? Are you Napoleon? Are you Napoleon? Cyrus? Cyrus? You, you mean, mean that, that wizard, wizard guy? guy? Wizard? He's not He's here. here. Not, not anymore. anymore. But he but told us you'd come if we kept, kept banging, banging that song, that song on, the on the wall. Hey, hey, hey Napoleon? Napoleon? Yeah. yeah. Can you, Can you help us out of here? Yeah. Give us, Give a, us hat, a hat, huh? Yeah, yeah sure. sure. Um, um, let me just, uh, uh get a grip. Uh, 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 ready? ready? <laughs> Up we go. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Hand up the Hand instruments, up the guys. guys. Uh, uh, then I'll help, then you, I'll help you, out. you out. Okay, instruments. Um, wow. Uh. Hey, thanks, man. Yeah, we owe ya. You're... you're alive! Hey, little sister! Guys, hey guys, Margo's here. I thought I'd lost you all. 
Nah, it takes more than a bunch of cut-rate Draculites to keep us scratch kids down. You know that. <laughs> uh, big family. So you said Cyrus told you to knock out that rhythm. Yeah. But you also said that he's not here right now. Right. The vampires would pull us out of the still one at a time to interrogate us. If we didn't give them the information they wanted, they'd drain off our ether till we complied. Demons have souls? Not cool, man! Where'd you dig up this joker, Margot? The Canadians fulfilled their contract, and he's taking over for them. Oh man, Darren owed me money! So, what happened to Cyrus? Don't look at me. One day, he just didn't come back. Oh, hey, the letter. You still got that letter? Oh yeah, right here. Cyrus had to give this to you, when you arrived. Let me see that. Hey, he left it for me. Dear Napoleon, did you like my use of Morse code? I knew you'd recognize it. You see, I know more about your own life than you do at this point. What's that supposed to mean? Hold on, there's more. Please relay to Anatole that I am alright, and that Plan B will now be initiated. Plan B? P.S. Opening that hatch will trigger a silent alarm, alerting the vampires. You have about five minutes, give or take, depending upon how quick the boys were in giving you this letter. L-O-L, Cyrus. L-O-L? Does he think this is funny? Maybe he means lots of love. Forget that! We have to figure out what we're going to do! And fast! Look at that shriveled body over there. Oh. Ugh. You know what that means. It means the vampires have teamed up with the Amaranthines, and that we're screwed! Not exactly. Wait a minute. Margo, those weren't Legos in my pocket. Huh? Ugh. That was the button not Hitler's brain gave Adam. It has a homing device in it. If I press this, I can summon an army of circus freaks to help us. Well, how fast can they get here? We're about to find out. <laughs> Nap! That wasn't me! That was the button! Look! <laughs> Nap, this isn't a button to summon freaks. It's one of those gag gifts you get at the mall. Not necessarily. Maybe it coincidentally just makes the same sound. It still has the price tag on the bottom. I can't believe it. Not Hitler's brain lied to me. I bet he's not even really not Hitler. Guys! Listen! Doi! Hot bin jopo. Tak to co? Chisto. Pidjo. It's Katya. And she's brought friends. Um. Hide. Everyone behind that still! Okay, guys, stay calm. We have to think through. They're right on top of us. They're gonna find us. Okay, here's the plan. Guys, you run a distraction. Can do. Nap, while the vampires are distracted, you run out and start shooting your phone. What? Look, Napoleon, I saw what you did to that Dungeoneer. Wait, he did that? You can do this. You just have to believe in yourself the way I believe in you. Okay. First of all, I know that was supposed to be sexy, but it came off as very after-school special. And secondly... We've been spotted. It's go time, boys. Okay, vampires, time to say Dosvidanya! What are you doing? This isn't an 80s video. You can't just rock people to death. Don't worry about them, Nap. Get out there now! Let me rock with you, animal I'm kinda good with that type of stone If I'm bad, you can blow me up Send me out to oblivion Rock for you 
Except for you. And the demons, of course. They slipped out the back. <laughs> look at these guys. All withered up like dried leaves. And look. You touch them? <laughs> they just crumble into dust. <gasps> Crazy. Stop it! Stop it! <laughs> okay, geez. It's not like they're coming back. How? How did you do this? You! I don't understand. Neither did I until now. But all that ether refreshed me. I'd been starving all this time and never even knew. What are you talking about? In all your years of research into the Serpan device and the psychotronics, am I really the first one you've met? The first what? Leah called it an Amma Rana Nana Ding Dong or something. I don't know. One of those. Um Amaranthine? Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Oh, such a stupid name. Jeez. No. No. I would have known. I would have seen it. How? I didn't even know myself until a moment ago. I didn't remember anything at all until the Sasquatch found me. That night, when she touched me, I remembered all the lives I'd been forced to live. All the lies I'd been made to tell. But I couldn't understand them for what it all meant. And those memories began to fade the moment she left. But I installed the mind control device on your phone. An amaranthine would never have been susceptible. You never imagined that I did all those things for you. Because I cared about you. Or I did until I realized that you were just using me as a tool. Your tinkering almost cost me everything. That phone is my memory. If I hadn't kept such meticulous records, every detail logged, 
I'd have written that night off with the Sasquatch as a dream and lost myself again, like I have a hundred times before. And the Sasquatch? You've drained her ethers like the others. Hmm. I never got the chance. I wouldn't have known to do that anyway. I just wanted to find her. Ever help me sort out the mess she'd left in my skull? Ah, oh, it's funny, really. I searched for her all those years, subjecting myself to the rantings of every fringe lunatic spouting off something about the paranormal. But most of them were jokes. Old fools comforted by a blanket of delusions. Now and then, though, I'd claw at a kernel of truth and find myself one step closer to her. When at last I thought I'd found her again, after all those years, <laughs> she wouldn't have me. Abandoned me to wander alone in my fractured mind. But thanks to your comrades, I'm feeling much better now. Anyway, it's been real. <laughs> Guess I'll be going now. No, Napoleon, please. Please what? Don't leave me like this, alone with my failure, my shame. I don't think there's enough room in the sob, uh, especially now with the band and all their junk. You know that isn't what I mean. Then tell me, Katya. I, I, I want to join my troops. If you've ever cared for me. Grant me this one last request. I trust you to give me a more merciful end than what my superiors will have planned for me. Fine. Provided you show me how to deactivate the Serpan device. You can't. You can't. Show me, Katya. Or I'll leave you here to take whatever punishment you have coming. No. No. What I mean is it can't be shut down. Not from a single location, anyway. You'd have to deactivate every device that it's been integrated into worldwide. Convince every citizen to give up their smartphones, video games, computers, televisions. And even if you could, the vampires would find another way to package it to the masses. The truth is... We never take their aethers. The humans give them willingly. They would never admit it themselves, but they have no desire left to live, only to dole their pain. That's a pretty miserable outlook coming from someone who until just a few minutes ago aspired to live forever. No. I wanted to see the world become a place that people actually want to live in again. Oh, but to make a change like that, you can't do it in a single lifetime. No, you'd have to be immortal. You don't know how lucky you are. What does it matter if we steal Aether from some fool content to live their life on the couch, when we could make better use of it? You're gonna wish you hadn't told me all of that, Katya. Fine. What does it matter now? Because... I don't think I can bring myself to kill you. I can't go back. You don't know what they'll do to me. Please, Napoleon, don't leave me here. You can't. Please. 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 Goodbye, Katya. And it looks recording like now. Yes, we are recording. Oh. Boop. <laughs> Okay, so I am here with Gally, who is an independent artist and also works with the band Digital Lizards of Doom. Of Doom. Yes. <laughs> and no relation. That is my last name. Um, yes! So good. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, I actually met Gally at uh, Free Comic Book Day uh, last year, I think. 
Mm-hmm. And uh, she uh, is also involved with uh, Digital Lizards of Doom, which is going to be a graphic novel coming up. Yeah, well, sometime this year, hopefully. Art, you know, art takes time, and I'm so pleased by the stuff that we've seen. But, you know, it's like it's a process. It doesn't happen overnight. <laughs> and uh, would you be free to divulge, like, uh, a little synopsis of this comic book? You know what? I do have a synopsis here somewhere. Um, the guy who created it is my bandmate, Gabe Valentine, and he is just an absolutely brilliant creator. He's a brilliant musician. So I'm going to try to sum it up the best I can. I... I I don't know if I can like look it up at the last minute, but so basically digital lizards of doom is set in an alternative universe and Dizzy doom is the protagonist. So you've got this, you've got, um, let's see antagonists like Wardy Morta and commander echo and Dana deathly is his sidekick and she knows guitar karate. It's this beautiful and vivid, like it's super original. I've never seen anything like it. And I've told that to Gabe many, many times because once the graphic novel comes out and it and it starts sweeping the nation, I can't wait to see people getting into it more. For example, like pineapples are Dizzy Doom's favorite food, and you'll see him eating them. And Mr. Emperor guy, who is like the, you know, uh, the the wise old one of the series, and it's um it's it's so how do I put it contemporary. But at the same time, reminds me very much of like old Saturday morning cartoons or the nostalgia that you get when you used to like I I wasn't in the comic book world for 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 very long. Mm-hmm. Like he he's lived this his entire life. And I'm I'm a nerd in other ways. Like I played a bazillion video games. Like I said earlier, I, I yeah. was a PC gamer growing up. I never got into comic books and I want to. And when I do have the time, I probably will. Mm-hmm. And I think Digital Lizards of Doom will help with that. Um, But he's just created something that's very, very, very vivid. And we've been posting some of the art on our Instagram, which is just Digital Wizards of Doom, because uh, the artists are Margo and Ernie, Mm -hmm. and they are insanely talented. And the art style of it is unlike anything I've ever seen before. It's like got such a unique color scheme and the characters come to life on the page. So, yeah, uh, hopefully within the next, I'd say by the end of 2019, it'll be coming out. Very cool. And for listeners of the show, I just have to say that that is a different Margot than Margot McGrath. Who... <laughs> yeah, her name is Margot uh, Prodan or P R O D. I I don't know how to pronounce it. Prodan. <laughs> Very cool. So, yeah, that's really exciting. I'm really excited to hear it. Uh, Me too. Yeah. And so you, you obviously have a lot of interests. What got you into performing and recording as a musician? Performing and recording as a musician. Okay, well... I, I've been writing music and singing music since I was a little girl. Mm-hmm. And I think that music is something that if you're born with it, you know how to speak it and you don't even have to play it, but it's kind of like if you're an appreciator of music or if you, if you speak music, you play music, it's within you. So yeah, music has always been, it's insane to think about all the things that have happened since I was very, very young because talking to you now today, I've, done so much already and I'll tell you like it's a hard road to walk because yeah. art well art means so much to us and we're creatives right mm-hmm. so you have to somehow keep like the art side of it and the business side of it near each other they've got to kiss one another but I love music it 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 keeps me alive and I I've done so when I was in my teen years I played a lot of folk music I was in a duo called get this we, at first we called ourselves partners in rhyme <laughs> oh, that's cute. I like it. because it was really like he came up with it and Brian he was so proud of himself when he came up with partners in rhyme but unfortunately we couldn't keep that name because there was like a hip-hop duo in I think Indiana mm. and they like they contacted us and said yo that's our name you can't take it and oh. we were like oh okay so we uh, ended up changing our name to novel concept which I think is okay it's kind of you know kind of cool we had a lot of fun like we were we were multi-instrumentalists so like some days I'd play banjo or you know he'd play mandolin or I'd play the melodica and I'd play the keyboards and he'd play guitar so we just it was pure and innocent music and I spent a lot of time thinking about those days because that's really where I got like my performing chops I realized that there was this 
connection that you could make with an audience that was more than just, I'm going to play this really beautiful song, which is Mm -hmm. part of it, but it's also something very intimate. And I, we had so much fun. Like we, we did coffee shops and showcases and we even played a couple of weddings, which was really beautiful. And we were together for, uh, not romantically, but we were, Mm -hmm. we played music together for five years and then he moved and got married and had a kid like, like life does, you know? And then I ventured on to do my solo stuff. And, you know, I, I love playing solo music. It's not the same as performing with somebody else. Like I've been in many bands and now, you know, now digital lizards of doom is a duo, Mm -hmm. but there's, there's something that, when you're just playing music with someone on stage that you can kind of like, you hit a really sweet guitar riff or a mandolin riff or a keyboard riff or you're singing and you're up there sharing your heart with everyone else. It's fun to do side by side yeah. with somebody. Yeah. Uh, but I did, I ventured out and I did solo stuff for a while and it was fun. And I mostly played piano. Piano is like my main instrument. I love the piano. Never took any lessons. Mm-hmm. Nope. Wait, that's not true. I took like a month of lessons oh, <laughs> and, then cool. I, and then I ended up ditching them because I thought they were too, uh... okay, I'll give you an example. Mm-hmm. My piano teacher used to take a handful of candy, which as I've mentioned before is my, my favorite food in the world. Nice. And she would sprinkle it across the keys mm-hmm. and I would play a song and I, you know, I was sight reading. I was learning to sight read, learning theory and all that stuff, which is extremely helpful. Yeah. But every time I made a mistake, she'd take a piece of candy off of the piano. <laughs> and I was like, that just gives me anxiety. Yeah, <laughs> that doesn't encourage me to play the song better at all. So now nah, I, I took music theory in college for a bit, but most of what I do is just, I feel it and I hear it and I listen to it. And that's how I create and how I craft. And it's really, really beautiful. And uh, I did the solo thing for a few years in my early twenties. And then mm-hmm. I totally abandoned it. I, I, I abandoned music. I think everyone needs to come to the point where they What's that phrase? They say, if you love something, let it go. And if it comes back to you, it was yours. Mm -hmm. Is that that the phrase? I think so. Um, Well, I did. I got so discouraged. (laughs) So discouraged. Because, like I said, you're working with something that means a lot to you. You're working with something that that you've created. You know, this is is your identity. And And I just was like, this is not working. I've tried so many different times. And the right doors are not opening. And I don't even know if I'm helping people anymore. I don't know if my art is considered authentic to others. And that's the reason why I do it. Mm -hmm. So I ditched it. I I abandoned it. And still to this day, my manager at Noise Cartel Records, he makes fun of me. He goes, by the way, this time last year, you were ready to quit music. And I was like, yep, I was. (laughs) But I didn't, didn't, kept fighting. And in the past couple of years, I ended up, okay, get this. So I'm going to tell you how I met Gabe Valentine, Mm -hmm. which is a very interesting story. Uh, I went to a comic book shop. Actually, it's here in San Diego. It has since closed down. But do you know, did you ever hear of Villainous Lair? Oh, yeah, yeah. Dude, Villainous Lair, uh, the owner, Allison Flynn, is a very good friend of mine. Uh, Before they closed down, I went in with my friend Michael. We were just browsing, looking for maybe like a tabletop game to play or something Mm -hmm. during one afternoon. And we walk in and... You know, we're looking around, and I decided to buy a pin because I have a jacket where I keep a lot of, you know, nerdy pins on it. And I, it was a Green Lantern pin or something like that. And I go up to the cash register where Gabe is working because he worked there for a while. And I'm handing him the dollar for the pin. And as I'm handing him the money, he goes, are you a musician? <laughs> and I was like, yeah. <laughs> so we started talking, and I, I forget what led up to this, but... Uh, we stayed in we stayed in touch. I think we got coffee the week after that. And we kind of talked. We updated each other on like what, what we were doing musically because I was still releasing solo material at the time. And uh, for about a year, he was really hard to get a hold of because your schedule just gets insane when you're doing so many things. And yeah, he, he asked me to do some vocals on his album, the the one that we actually just released last year called Lizards and Labyrinths, which yes is a play on Dungeons and Dragons. Nice. And uh, he had me do some vocals for him and it was real fun. And I thought the music was real catchy and really unique. Kind of like gorillas meets like alt J meets the misfits. It's just, it, there's like a, it was a unique sound, mm-hmm. fun, fun, punky electronic rock. And I did a couple of vocals for him, which I do all the time. I do vocals for a lot of different people. And he, uh, 
I, I ended up helping him out at a show, I think. It was at a place called The Backdrop here in San Diego. And at the end of the show, because he's a master guitar player and very good showman, he looks at me as he's putting his stuff away, and I'd just gone up to talk, and I was helping him with, like, social media and stuff, and he goes, Gally, do you want to join the band? <laughs> oh, nice. And I was like, and I don't know, and, you know, there there are just decisions that you make in your life where you just know, mm-hmm. where you where you where like, your gut goes, yeah, I think that's probably a good idea. So I said, I said, yes. And we started rehearsing a couple months later, and suddenly... We were playing our first show, I think, within a few weeks, which meant that I had to I had to like crash course, learn a bunch of his songs yeah. at the last minute, which was really, really fun. His music is just freaking fun to play. Uh, and at first I was doing keys and now I do Mando and I do a little bit of both. But he just asked me to join the band. And since then, I'm telling you, Nap, it has been the most incredible ride. It is mind blowing the things that have happened in the past year. And we can talk about that more, but yes, nice. that is my very lengthy description for how I got into music in the first place. I've done a lot. I love it. I live and breathe it. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so what kind of music do you live and breathe? Ooh, all kinds. All kinds. I, I, I say that because in the past year and I most, like I said, I mostly did folk music for the first, you know, for the starting years of my career. But Mm -hmm. since then I have branched into, oh, let's see, folk, rock, pop, country, bluegrass, hip hop. I haven't really done anything in R&B yet, but I, I hope that won't take too much longer. Mm -hmm. Um, I even was, I, I did some when I say metal music, I do mean metal. I didn't write the metal song, but I guessed it with the metal song, which is really, really fun. They're a band called The Undertaking, exclamation mark, and they are super cool. And then electronic music has really, 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 really taken a <laughs> big head uh, in my life lately. Big head, big nose, big, what's the phrase I'm looking for? A significant status. Um yeah, EDM. Okay, so what kind of music do I live and breathe? The short answer is all kinds. Nice. But I think my heart really lies in, probably because I had my roots in it, the indie singer-songwriter folk type stuff. The, the, the music that I work on that's solo galley stuff, galley fisher, um, when I'm not working for someone else, because I, I write a lot of tracks for DJs and electronic artists and when Gabe and I write music, it's like, you know, more rock, kind of indie rock stuff. But for me, for, for Galley, it's like, I would say indie folk, kind of like, okay, some of my biggest influences, like, do, do you ever hear the band Super Tramp? Oh, yeah, yeah. Super Tramp is way up there nice. because, A, these guys are like musical geniuses. Each of them, I don't know if they were classical musicians or if they just knew a lot about theory, mm-hmm. but I tried to learn one of their songs the other day and holy crap, their their p- chord progressions are <laughs> don't make any sense, but they make all the sense in the world and these guys they were a rock band, mm-hmm. but they had all these like heavy piano, heavy synth, um really beautiful falsettos and like interesting harmonies and stuff. I love that stuff. Oh, yeah. That is like what makes music interesting to me is when when you have all these different layers, totally multifaceted. And my parents had really eclectic taste in music, so they raised me with like this Canadian rock band called the Stampeders or the Steve Miller Band or um, Crosby, Stills and Nash and Steely Dan. So this like folk element has you know shown through, but I also really love heavy piano and like heavy synth. Yeah. So the music that I that I always end up going to when I'm in the studio when I'm recording my own stuff. Oh, and a lot of acapella. Mm. I really like acapella stuff. Like you can do so much with the human voice. And uh, I was actually in like a four girl, an all girls quartet. I guess you can say in high school. We called oh. ourselves we called ourselves the Lily Chain. And I love four part harmonies. I just love harmonies in general. Um, harmonies are so beautiful (laughs) that I hear so many of them so yeah probably folk music speaks to me the most but I I think that every person could appreciate any genre you know what I mean like Mm -hmm. music is music is music and if you speak it and if you love it you know that that person who's on the stage like I went to this show the other day and there was this uh this guy playing folk music and he I'm gonna say he wasn't the most technically proficient 
But it didn't matter because the people in the room loved his honesty up on stage. Yeah. And really that's that's why we make music is because we're sharing something with other people. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. There's my other lengthy response. Wow. All <laughs> good. All good. Now you mentioned your parents and you mentioned Gabe. Um, mm-hmm. Are Would you say there, there's significant people in your life who kind of uh, encouraged you or inspired you or conversely who mm. tried to hold you back? Ooh, that's a good question because I was just thinking about that. So funny. I was thinking about that the other day. Yes and yes to both. Mm. So I, <laughs> I'm a pretty solitary person. I'm not going to lie. Like I... If I had to spend the rest of my life with just myself, I probably could. But recently, I've really come to understand the value of relationship. Mm-hmm. So to the first part, are you kidding me? Yes, my family was. Oh, and I, and OK, I couldn't even say the same about my bandmate. I don't think Gabe's family was as supportive of his music career as my family was of mine. And I and I think that goes for a lot of people. So having supporters is crucial. It's monumental. I. My parents, even though they wanted me to earn whatever I did, which I've always been a hard worker and they've always trusted that about me, they have always said from a young age that 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 I had a gift, the gift of music, which I think in my younger years I really needed to hear because you do need to hear that kind of affirmation, at yeah. least at first. It's very rare that somebody would just jump into it and have all of the confidence in the world. And my parents have always been incredibly supportive. I am oodles of thanks for them. And they, they you know, they come to all my shows. And they, they to this day, they post their stuff on their social media, even though they don't really know how to. Sorry, mom and dad. <laughs> uh, but they share all of my stuff too. And my friends, because I went to Grossmont College, and so when I was playing piano in those music hallways, I would play some of my stuff for my for my fellow students, and they would always vocalize, you know, encouraging things. So I think it's important to know who you are as an artist. Of course, of course, you have to have your own voice and believe in what you're doing. And we all have days where we don't <laughs> where we don't believe in it or we're feeling down. I, I have those days all the freaking time. But the the voice of people around you can really mean a lot. And I have been incredibly supported. And subsequently, have, or not subsequently, I guess I could say parallel, mm-hmm. I have also had a lot of people be naysayers. Um, and not just naysayers. I've had people tell me things about my voice and my music that when I heard it didn't feel like in my chest, it didn't feel authentic. Like it didn't feel true. For example, uh, <laughs> there was one song that I wrote this last year and it was mostly acapella, a little bit of hand claps and stuff. And I had someone say, Oh, that sounds like a kid's song. Now I'm sure in some realm of, of reality it could have been but I got I let that get in my head now a that doesn't have to be a bad thing Mm -hmm. kid songs are great and b it was one person and so when I say that I mean that the fact that I let it get in my head for almost a year nap almost a year I let that get in my head and so I didn't do anything with the song well what a tragedy because I showed it I showed it to Gabe my bandmate and it was one of the songs that let him uh, believe that I was the right person to join the team. So you never really know. You never know. <laughs> you just have to believe mm-hmm. in yourself. And, uh, oh, you're going to get pe- – there's haters everywhere. I mean, I just released this song, relatively big deal, called Never Change with a duo called Crystal Skies. They're an EDM duo. And this song, it charted – this is just last week, within the past four days. It was number 26 on the iTunes charts. And I love the song. And people are going berserk. It's got tens of thousands of plays and listens already, right? But how can I still release a song like that and have and go onto YouTube and see someone being like, you know, there's always gonna be that one person, even though they are they are in fact the exception. So this one guy goes, Oh, you know, a little clunky, life for better and out of all of the oodles of positive comments I've read, I I read his and I was like, meh. And I showed my husband and I, I was like, how come this guy can't like the track? And he was like, Gally, or he calls me Megan, which is my real name. He goes, Gally, why are you focusing on that? Are you serious? You just released a track that like everyone and their mother is loving it. And you've got this one guy who goes, man, you cannot, 
the the bottom line is you cannot please everyone and you will not please everyone and that's perfectly fine i love differences of opinions and i love it when uh, you know you have you have people who have different tastes that's totally fine you just can't let it get to you you can't let it you can't get in your head about it because it's art you are you you have something to contribute to the world and no matter what anyone says that will remain to be true Very cool. <laughs> you know what i mean yeah absolutely uh it's it's hard not to focus on the i, I you're really not anyone until you get those negative comments though yeah i mean that that's really the mark that you've made it is when people are people feel the need to knock you down the back yeah in fact sometimes and this is something you just touched on something gabe has told me that before he goes sometimes when you get ne- like negative attention it's even a good thing <laughs> Yeah. Which I've, I've, you know, I don't, you know, we don't want to believe that. We don't want to like that, but it's, it's true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, um, when, when you're saying that, how do you hope that people who appreciate your music, how do you hope they view you as an artist? Yeah. I've actually been thinking a lot about that lately because <clears throat> like I said, I've been working in music for a long time, but only in the past year has it become, I guess you could say, quote unquote, successful. Mm -hmm. And that is a huge pressing question in my mind. In fact, I journal about it daily because uh, I know who I am as a friend and the people who are around me and what is identity anyways? Like some people, most people view us through their own eyes anyways. And I get really nervous when I think about who I want to be as an artist. I I can't lie because there's a certain element of showmanship to these things like getting on stage and being happy to be there. But there's also, you still have to be true to yourself. And one of my biggest fears, no joke, because I think about it so often is not seeming authentic or being able, hmm, being able to help people through my art. Mm -hmm. Like it means so much to me that I overthink it. Sometimes I have, I could die happy right now. I The response that I've gotten since I started performing professionally when I was 15 or 16, the, the amount of people, which there is no number that would satiate, like one person, for my music to affect one person, which it already has, mm-hmm. I could die happy. And I mean that. That's, that's why I do it. Um, the, the hope is to reach more and more people and to transform lives through my music. But... Since I was younger, I've had people tell me how my music has affected them. And uh, it's comforting to know, but it, it's also, I take it kind of seriously. Like, I think that there are a lot of artists out there who do it for the fame. Mm-hmm. If you know what, if you understand that, like they, they are in it and I'm sure that they are helping people. But their priorities would be kind of money and recognition. Yeah. And there's not anything necessarily wrong with that, I, I think, unless it turns you into a douchebag. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, it's easy to be lured in by stuff like that. Mm-hmm. When you start making it successful, you know, like I, I wrote a song that charted. That's a very cool thing. Yeah. I'm not going to hover around that because as cool as that is, it, it, the, the thing that means the more, more to me is that I went, I've went? i been going through and seeing the responses, these people who have like reached out to me on all different forms of social media, on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook, who are telling me what, how the song has helped them. Yeah. That is why I do, that's why I do music. From the get-go, it has been to change people or help people or, or, or stimulate people and to, to, to realize that there's so much more to being alive, that there is this magic, this, this alternate dimension that you can live in. That's just full of love and full of, uh, you know, meeting new people and just being friends with people. That's what it's, that's really why I do it. So, so going back to answer your question to, to be an artist, I think a lot of it has to do with authenticity. Mm-hmm. A band that has made it really, really far that I, that I respect deeply is 21 Pilots. Now, last year, I didn't really know much about them. I thought because they're so mainstream, they must not have a lot to say. Well, I, that was a silly thing for me to think because since then, and all of my like learning about new artists and new musicians, Tyler, 
the the singer uh he struggles with freaking depression anxiety insomnia he's got all these shadow selves that he's battling all the time and you know what he does Mm -hmm. he puts that on stage for people to uh to see because we are all that way i can't stand it when when artists pretend to have all of their shit together, nobody yeah. has their shit together. We are all struggling with stuff. And 21 Pilots, I think that one of the reasons they're so successful, in addition to being masters of their craft, because mm. they are both multi-instrumentalists and very, very talented at the instruments they play. So they've got this like deep well of proficiency, but they also tap into this emotion that everyone around the globe can resonate with. That's speaking music. And for a while I was, you know, I've I've worked with producers who were like, we're going to make you a star. We're going to give you long blonde extensions and and put you up on stage and have you in a long slinky dress and, and, you know, blah, blah, blah. Cause Mm -hmm. you know, they like my voice and blah, blah, blah. And I thought, okay, if that's what the world needs to hear from me, but it's not. No. It it can be. There is a little bit of superficiality. It's the music industry, for goodness sake. But there's this like resurgence of independent artists lately. And I love seeing that. I love seeing all of this super emotional stuff, like stuff that is not super produced, yeah. that isn't overproduced. Yeah, yeah, because with technology, we realize what we were capable of, right? Ooh, we can add all these different, you know, blah, 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 blah. We got all these new ways to record, new ways to capture sound. But then I think it became consumeristic. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Like it became, how can we entertain people for three minutes? You know, because our attention spans are shortening instead of what are we saying? And that's probably my biggest gripe with contemporary music, mainstream music, pop music is that, uh, it's become a dollar sign instead of what you can say to other people. Now there's not necessarily, again, I know I make this disclaimer a lot, but there's not necessarily anything wrong with that. It's just not, it's not the future that I want from my career as an artist. Yeah. No, I think, I think that's uh, definitely one of the the things that I, I find frustrating about that industry Mm -hmm. is you had someone like Susan Boyle come out and she is the most obvious example. Mm. And people are like, what you're, you're not pretty, but you can sing. And it's, they're not related. They're not related. Yeah. 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 (laughs) Well, and then think about it though, because I saw that video and that video gave me goosebumps Mm -hmm. And if that video, if that can give you goosebumps, then you know there's something amazing going on. It doesn't matter how you look. It, there's, I love that about nowadays is because there, there really is this. Um, ooh, I wish I could remember the name of this, uh, this band. No, I could not remember. I couldn't tell you. I know too many artists. Uh, <laughs> there is this like raw sort of artist emerging mm-hmm. that you're seeing in a lot of music now, where it's kind of like it doesn't matter how we look if we get up there and we we capture you for a few minutes or for an hour or for whatever. Uh, that's what people care about. And, and, and I think sometimes people don't know what they want or what they like. I think one of the reasons that people have such a consumeristic uh, approach to music nowadays is because that's what they've been fed. It's kind of like your yeah. diet. We, we are addicted to the additives in food or the grocery store type stuff because that's what's available to us and that's what we consume. So if you have all this music that's like very binge worthy, you have these pop songs that you can play on repeat over and over again, that's what you're going to play on repeat over and over again. Sometimes it takes work to go and find that other music and sometimes people don't want to do that. And uh, it sucks <laughs> because yeah. I wish I wish that more people – uh, I don't know, took their music diet more seriously. Yeah. I guess that's kind of a good way to put it. Um, but that it is happening. It is happening. You're seeing it start to happen. Like, for example, the the record label that I'm signed to is Noise Cartel. Oh, hi, kitty. My cat just came down to say hello to me. Hi, Aww. kitty. Uh, Noise Cartel Records is an Australian record label, and they're for independent artists. So it's more like they're not going to – they're going to give you all the tools and resources you need to do it on your own. And uh, he, Matt, the manager, the owner of Noise Cartel, he's told me that there's this super, like, that acoustic music, or I would say acoustic or raw or, like, uh, minimally produced music in Australia yeah. is, like, really, really hot right now. And I, and I think about that and I go, well, it's because there were just all these tracks coming out that 
yeah, they sounded kind of cool, but they sounded a little inorganic. Yeah. Kind of like they were they were manufactured so that people could listen to and and that it's like eating a candy bar. You'll eat it and it'll give you energy for an hour or so, but it's not going to give you anything that lasts mm-hmm. for like the next week. Yeah. 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 Not nourishing yourself. Yeah, nourish. <laughs> yeah. So, very cool. Um Let's see here. Um, I'm going over my list of questions because you, you you tapped into a couple of them that I was going to ask. <laughs> you. I'm so long winded. <laughs> <laughs> no, I I like it. Uh, it's it's very cool. Uh, f- so, do you think that uh, I I know you said that you you left music for a little bit. Uh, is there anything in your life that you think would make you leave music on a permanent basis, and why or why not? Ooh, <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> Um, leave music on a permanent basis. Why or why not? Okay. So I've, I've done a bunch of different things in my life. For most of my twenties, I did not do music at all. In fact, I've done, so I'm, I write, I love to write. I've done editing work before. I love to edit. I love to tell other people what they're doing wrong. (laughs) Uh, I love to edit. I've done, I did event planning for a while. That was actually one of my first jobs was, you know, planning like events and stuff. Cause I, I, I like I love events. I love the atmosphere that you, that you of going to, you know, say a festival or a, a dinner party or stuff like that. There's yeah. something very magical about events that I've always liked. Um, but I have always come back to music. I it ha, it is that little whisper in my soul that has never never quieted, and. I don't want to do anything else. And at this point, I think I've put so many eggs in this basket. And I don't mean for it to sound, you know, like work because it has also become work. And that's dangerous for, for an independent artist. If, Because, like, I write EDM tracks on a regular basis. I've done hundreds of them by now for, for money, um, you know, like a job. Mm-hmm. Like I write EDM tracks and it run, runs risk of taking the, the passion out of it. Yeah. Um, but it has never gone away. And I think every other artist can understand that because even though music is a wily mistress and will break your heart over and over again, you, you can't get enough of it. It's kind of like a state of being it's, it's, it's knowing what you were meant to do. Like, and everyone is different. I I have met people who, they DM D and D games and they're really, really good at it. And I think that they could make a career out of it. And that's what they do. Like, uh, I ever hear of my brother, my brother, brother and I, or, um, what's it called? Adventure zone, the podcast. Oh yeah. Yeah. They are freaking amazing. <laughs> they are, per- they are personalities. They are doing what they, it's kind of like half stand up comedy, but it's not stand up comedy. Cause it's like improv. Mm-hmm. So they are just funny guys who have a lust for life who are witty and they play this game and they're making a living doing it. And I bet they could do other things. I bet they could like, and I bet they have, I bet they could host a radio show or, um, you know, be a stand up comic or something like that, but they're not, they're thriving in their, in their conditions. They're doing something that they adore and they're sharing that adoration with mass amounts of people around the world. I, I want to take it like technology is amazing because it can connect everyone from around the globe. And I love that. It's a very good era to be alive. Yeah, yeah I agree. <laughs> uh, I, if I ever get that discouraged in music again, I now have a web of people who will not let me. <laughs> if that makes any sense. Yeah. Uh, Gabe, my dear, dear friend and bandmate, and I'm so honored to play music with him. I have such respect for him. He, We kind of brought each other back from the brink of musical death mm. because there is a point where you're just ready to throw in the towel because he, uh, okay, if I can talk about Gabe for a second, sure. he has been taken advantage of, oh, you want to talk about like coming so close to your hopes and dreams and then having it all snatched from you. Mm. I'm not going to name names, but he, <laughs> he has... Uh, Oh my goodness. <laughs> the fact that he continues is inspiration to me. Uh, and I know he feels the same way. He he has lost tons of money and time. He has been rolled over by people who viewed him as a product, which let's be let's be clear. You kind of are if you're mm-hmm. going 
make a, a living doing music. You kind of are a product. You just have to find your thing that is your thing and do it. Uh, but he was really thrown to the waves and, uh, he has kept going so many times like I have. And there's, there is a feeling that some people get that most people get when you've tried, like when you're playing dark souls, I know that's probably a very specific example because there are a lot of people who are listening that have not played dark souls, but it's a game that's incredibly challenging and incredibly, uh, punishing kind of like Cuphead or, or any other games that it's like they make oh, it hard. Cuphead, yeah. yeah, yeah. They make it hard. <laughs> they make it difficult on purpose because they know that there's a select amount of people who love that stuff because they like a challenge. And because the feeling that you have when you have risen to the occasion and when mm. you have fought blood, sweat, and tears and you have made it to the end and you finally beat that boss and you finally figure out that solution – it's like, or like you can even apply it to sports. If you're in a game, then you come out from the bottom and you were, you know, the, the whole underdog thing. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's like, it feels so much more rewarding and so much more satisfying if you actually put the work into it. But the problem is, is that, and this is easy to do, most people will get discouraged and they'll give up at some other percent through. Like in Cuphead when he, you know, you die and he, the little guy runs across the screen and he's like, a sliver from the end. And you realize that he was so close to beating it and being at the end. But uh, it's fine. Yeah. All the, and I've said this to people because I want to start a blog. I want to eventually write and blog about all of my experiences yeah. so that I hopefully share this with other people. Uh, it will feel like insanity. If you're an independent musician and you get discouraged and you're doing it over and over again, you feel like you're at the end of your ropes and you're a big fat failure and no one will ever give a shit about your stuff. It's easy to just throw in the towel. And I think a lot about failure because I'm really hard on myself and I was raised to be really tough and really, you know, failure is only failure. I think when you give up, right? I think if you try and you fail, that is success <laughs> because at least you're still trying. Absolutely. So the only failure that I've really experienced is when I decided to stop trying and it, it'll happen. It'll happen. But yeah. you know, at some point or another, I decided to keep going and I don't think I could do anything else. Nice. Yeah. Now, do you have any upcoming shows or events that you'd like to promote while you're on here? We do, and I will look up the schedule as I <laughs> talk to you. So cool. um, we do – it's really fun playing in Digital Lizards of Doom because uh, Gabe plays guitar most mm -hmm. of the time, and then, I, like I said, I play keyboard and mandolin. So we have two different types of sets. We have acoustic sets where cool. it's just kind of the two of us jamming out on mandolin and guitar, and then we have our digital sets where I'm on electric mandolin or I'm on the synthesizer, and those are big and loud. Nice. And it, you know, to pitch the music for a moment, our album Wizards and Labyrinths, which, by the way, one of the best albums I've ever been on. I freaking love the music. It is, we sing about, uh, you know, supernatural monsters, and we sing mm -hmm. about, uh, you know, like zombies and video games and theater, or like, theat uh, what is it called? Uh, oh my gosh, musicals and stuff like yeah. that. So theater type stuff. Everything that's nerdy, cartoons and... Everything you can imagine. Our song Lizards and Labyrinths is, like I said, a play on Dungeons and Dragons. And uh, it's just really, really fun. So, yes, we do have shows coming up in San Diego, which are local. All right. uh, on February 21st, we're doing – oh, it's called Day of the Duos. Okay. And it's like three two-part bands. So, nice. uh, you know, they each have two members in them. We have a nerd night. Uh, at Aztec Brewery, which is local, and Aztec Brewery is super dope, and we've been there quite a few times in the past few months. They have this like really thriving open mic because they want to promote local uh, live music, and it's getting quite a bit of attention. And I'm very, very happy for them because their venue is dope, and they're just a bunch of nerds running a brewery, so everyone gets together and drinks beer and listens to really, really cool music. So that's on March 16th. Uh, we're playing with a band, two bands called Bonehenge and Pink Eye. Oh, you know what I just realized? Oh, oh I'm so happy. <laughs> I went to, uh, because my, my brain is scattered into a million different pieces. Pink Eye is a band that I just saw last weekend. The, the girl who 
is the front singer for Pink Eye. She works at Aztec Brewery. Her name's Anna. She is super cool. She wore a tutu on, like, a ballerina tutu on oh, wow. stage. And she and her, her band, like, played this, like, punk rock. It was freaking beautiful. So I just realized we're going to be playing with them. I'm oh, wow. so happy. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, so we're always, you know, booking gigs. Nam was a pretty pretty big deal when we played that it was very energy consuming but i really really enjoyed it yeah um, for you guys who don't know she just did a nam show up in anaheim yeah She's... the whole like the whole convention center yeah. was just packed 150,000 people the hotels around there were just like full of bands like all day music all day and we got to do the hilton stage at midnight mm-hmm. so the whole place was packed Everybody was drunk, so we probably sounded really good. Uh, <laughs> and it was just, um, it, it was so much fun. I think I, it was just such a blur. Like yeah. it was late, energy was crazy, and it was just really, really fun. Cause like we get to the mandolin solo, uh, the guitar and mandolin solo, and we're like, and everyone's like, whoa! <laughs> like, whoa! What did they just do? So it was really good. And then on Sunday, uh, I actually got to be on a panel. I, I know I'm talking a lot, but on no, Sunday, I got, on Sunday, I got to be on a panel uh, for independent artists, actually. So, funny story. Thornton Klein was the guy who hosted the panel. And he was the guy that I met at my very first NAM oh. when I went to Nashville a few years ago. So, three years ago, I flew myself out to, Na- to NAM. I didn't know what I was doing. I just decided to go on a whim. Someone from Grossmont College, Anthony Coutieta, if you ever hear this, you're amazing. Uh, he was like, you should go to NAM. I thought it was a good idea. So, I went to the Nashville NAM. And I had seen a panel that really inspired me. And I went up to them afterwards. I was so nervous. I was so close to like turning around and just walking away. But I went and introduced myself to the guy who moderated the panel. And I handed him my demo CD. And he got back to me a week later and asked me to co-write with him. And then that's how I like continued going to Nam and continued like writing with him. We're actually going to be releasing music this year. And uh, that's how the whole thing started. And then on Sunday – so because of all the success from Digital Wizards of Doom, because I know we haven't stopped, talked statistics a lot, but we sold 25,000 albums in the first few days of the release. We were featured in Forbes magazine last year, which nice. was absolutely incredible. We have all this fancy, you know, it's it's becoming very successful. And I'm very happy because we both worked really, really hard at it. But because of that and because of the electronic music I've done recently, uh, I was like, I mean, I don't mean to phrase it this way, but I was viable for the panel because you know, if you're talking to people about success, you want to have people who are relatively successful in their yeah. shit. So I I had sat in this panel every year for, for three years. And the fact that I actually got to be on the panel, it, I, could, I can't even describe to you the feeling because I went from sitting in the crowd, being inspired and being motivated by these people up on stage. And then at NAMM early this year, I got to be on that stage and I got to talk to people in the audience. Oh. <laughs> my cat, literally, my cat, my cat just fell off of it. Oh, you are no. the, like, he's fine, but he's so cute. Anyways, um, I got to be on that panel and there were people afterwards coming up to me asking me questions. And like I said earlier, that is literally why I do music. So mm-hmm. I am honored and humbled and just amazed by the whole the whole process of things and the whole NAM weekend was just incredible. So, and moving into 2019, uh, I'm doing a lot of like electronic music. Like I said, Crystal Skies, Seven Lions, Last Heroes, Abandoned. There's like all these tracks I'm working on and it makes me really happy. It's a different, it's a different uh, ball of wax than the music that I'm normally used to because it's a little more commercial because, mm-hmm. you know, this is like EDM, trance, dubstep, stuff yeah. like that. But it, it's beautiful music and it, I actually happen to have a huge affinity for it. I realized. So it's I'm going to be releasing a lot of music this year, uh, under my stage name, which is Gally Fisher, G A L L I E F I S H E R. Um, yeah. So All that's right. that. <laughs> and, uh, where should they go to check you out online? Everywhere. I'm talking like Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. It's all Gally Fisher lower. I mean, Cases doesn't matter, but G A L L I E F I S H E R everywhere. You can just you can just Google it, and it kind of shows a bunch and of we'll, stuff. We'll put the links in the description box. Oh yay, yay! <laughs> yeah. Cool. Okay, awesome. Okay, thank you so much, Gally. It was amazing yeah. talking to you. Dude, it was so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm gonna see you at uh, Comic Fest too. Yes. So. Ooh, that's gonna be dope. Yes. Very <laughs> Can't cool. wait. Thank All you, right. Nap. Thank you. All right. Bye. Bye. 
Hey guys, I hope you loved that interview with Gally as much as I love doing it. Uh, she's great. Uh, make sure you go and check out uh, Digital Lizards of Doom and also check out her independent stuff. Uh, she is an excellent artist and I'm looking forward to her comic, uh, well, to the Digital Lizards comic book coming out soon. I just wanted to come in here and uh, say, what did you guys think of that plot twist there? Was that uh, something fun? Was that something you were expecting? Did you, did you catch the little signs and signals that were going on throughout? Um, anyway, just wanted to let you know that I really appreciate those of you who are coming back even after our long hiatus because uh, our, our goal is to release consistently but we can't always do that. <laughs> Life gets in the way. Um, you can help, of course, by uh, you know just following us on all of our social media and spreading the word whenever a new episode comes out. Uh, letting people know that you love the show or hate the show. Just let them know it exists. And uh, then you can also, if, if you're feeling really generous, you can always just uh, become a Patreon. Uh, that's uh, www.patreon slash lucid nap. And uh, even just like a dollar donation helps. <laughs> and uh, I don't know, maybe uh, give me some suggestions for uh, some rewards that you'd like to see. Eh, I'm I'm pretty new to this. I'm 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 old. I'm like 38, so I'm not, I'm not I'm not hep with what the kids are doing. Uh, so you, you gotta help me out here, okay, guys? <laughs> anyway, um, just, that's enough e-bagging for tonight. But uh, just wanted to let you know, guys, that I, I love so much that you're coming on this journey with me. We only got one episode left in this season, and then it's gonna be time for us to start uh, writing new scripts and recruiting new musicians and voice actors. So if you're one of those, and I, I know some of you are, some of you have reached out to me. Hi, Nick. I'm um, going to be contacting you. Just got to write the scripts. Um, <laughs> and go ahead and uh, talk to me or suggest some bands that you know that you'd love to hear on the show. So anyway, okay, thank you so much. And uh, take care. And hopefully we'll see you next time. All right, bye.